Hello, it's Dr. Rhonda Johnson, and today is Sunday, August 2nd, 2020. And today I'm going to be talking about COVID-19, some findings in the medical literature that have to do with COVID-19 uh, infection rates in children, as well as finding the virus in semen. And I'm also going to be talking about playing the long game in terms of COVID-19. You know, every month seems to bring more suffering from COVID-19 in some geographic region of the United States. In March, April, May, it was the Northeast. Now it's the South with 58% of cases in the United States and in the West with 23% of cases in the United States. Have you heard that we're currently averaging around 65,000 people who are testing positive every single day for COVID-19. Now let's put that in some perspective because I live in Pittsburgh and we have a very popular football team and they play at Heinz Field. Now, 65,000 people who are testing positive every day for COVID-19, that's enough to pretty much fill up Heinz Field. Now let that number sink in for a minute. Just think about that. This virus is out of control. Okay, moving on. Next, I wanna share some new uh, reports coming out of the medical journals. Uh, you probably heard about this one on the news. This was a study that received a lot of attention because it involved young children. And they tested young children for the coronavirus. And the children had 10 to 100 greater fold amount of the COVID-19 virus fragments, not the live virus, just the virus fragments in their nose in comparison to adults. Now just think about little children and their little snotty noses and just imagine all of those children with COVID-19. Now, what does that mean? We're not quite sure, but the researchers suggest that young children can potentially be important drivers of COVID-19 transmission in the general population. So clearly we need to do a lot more testing of children to know what role they play in this pandemic. Now, men, you may wanna sit down for this news. The COVID-19 virus has been recovered from semen and COVID patients who have active infection and from men who have recovered from their COVID-19 infections. Now, at this time, we don't know if it has any impact on male fertility, and we don't know if this virus can be sexually transmitted. We will just have to stay tuned. But that is a certainly interesting finding. So, um, again, we'll stay tuned for that. Now, this pandemic, continues to teach us more about ourselves, our politicians, our economy, our leadership. In comparison, the United States versus other similar nations, how we're handling the pandemic. It's teaching us about our mental health, our stress levels, our coping mechanisms. And it seems like we're just getting tested every day. So I want to use the term that I've been hearing a lot of, playing the long game for COVID-19. Now, those that know me know I'm not the best in terms of my sports literacy. So yes, I did look it up. I looked it up in the Urban Dictionary and it says the long game has to do with having a long-term plan, long-term goals, or doing things now that set you up for the future. Okay, so for this message, I want to leave you with some thoughts about playing the long game for COVID-19. When you play the long game for COVID-19, every decision you make, you're aware of how that impacts you tomorrow. Now, it only impacts us but it also impacts our entire families. And we're all connected to a bigger community. So in essence, 
we're not just thinking about ourselves or in that moment, we're thinking about how our particular actions in the moment affect us today, but also how it impacts others in our lives for a long time. Because what we've learned that for many people, getting over COVID-19 is a long journey. That folks who have asymptomatic infection, and that's roughly 40% of people, are the lucky ones. But that means 60% of folks are having a hard time recovering from COVID-19. Now, stretching this a little bit, playing the long game during this pandemic can also mean how you're managing your life. How are you managing your relationships with your family, your friends, your significant loved ones, and your loved ones in general? What about the long game of politics? If anything, we've learned how COVID-19 is so political. Healthcare is political. The health of our nation and the health of our world is being managed politically. So what does the long game mean in terms of voting during this pandemic? Here in the United States, we have a very important election coming up in November. And the results of this election can have an impact for a very long time. So playing the long games means thinking about your activity in this political process. Are you registered to vote? Is there something that you can do in the next three months to encourage voting amongst the people that you interact with? Another long game question has to do with the census. This is a year of the census. But of course, it's been overshadowed like everything else by the pandemic. But the census is certainly the long game because being counted in the census can impact a lot of things for the next 10 years. It can impact dollars for schools, for community health centers, Head Start, jobs. It can affect congressional voting districts again, for the next 10 years. So if you haven't filled out your census, please do so. Play the long game. And how are you playing the long game in terms of being healthy during this pandemic? We know that obesity and diabetes greatly increase the risk of complications if we get COVID. Are you trying to get healthy? at home during this pandemic? I hope so. Because folks, COVID-19 is here for the long game. Health experts say we're gonna be battling this pandemic well into 2021 and perhaps in 2022 until the majority of the population of this world has some level of immunity to this horrible virus. So we've got to play the long game. And remember the three W's, wash your hands, watch your distance, and wear your mask. This is Dr. Rhonda Johnson. All views are my own. My only attempt is to inform and educate and help us all to stay alive, stay well, and stop COVID-19. You know, I'd rather be six feet apart than be six feet under. I hope this has been informative to you, and I hope that you have a wonderful day today.